Hi everyone, Ben here again. Last video I showed you how to use IQMOL to make high quality three-dimensional images to use in your science project or lesson materials. I highly recommend you have watched that video before you watch this video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to simulate a molecule of water using Orca, which is a software package absolutely free to download on your home computer. I'll make sure to include links of all the software packages that I use in the description below. We're going to talk a lot about infrared spectroscopy in this video too. Infrared radiation is a region of the electromagnetic spectrum slightly lower in energy than visible light. Just like visible light, there are different frequencies within the infrared region. Think of different frequencies as different colors. Infrared radiation can be absorbed by molecules and this causes them to vibrate. Depending on the structure of the molecule, different frequencies or colors of infrared radiation are absorbed. Just take a look at this infrared spectrum of water. You can see these peaks in the spectrum are the frequencies at which water absorbs radiation and thus vibrates. Using Orca, we're going to simulate a molecule of water to calculate which frequencies it vibrates at. We'll then use Orca to calculate an infrared spectrum of our own, which I will turn into an image using LibreOffice. Then we can compare that to the experimental spectrum. Before we start, please make sure you have IQMOL installed. You'll also need a piece of software to make graphs or plots with. Microsoft Excel, Origin, Python, or LibreOffice are all perfect choices, but I'll be using LibreOffice for simplicity. Finally, you need to install Orca. You'll need to make an account on the Orca forum to do this. It's free, it's very quick, and it gives you access to the Orca forums, which you may find useful if you try out some projects on your own beyond this video. Right, ready? Orca can be a little bit fiddly to set up, uh, but I recommend just following the default process and that will leave Orca installed on your C drive. I then highly recommend you make a folder also on your C drive called Orca Calculations for you to run your calculations in. Each calculation is gonna need its own folder as well, so I've made one for water here. I'll kind of explain that as we go along as to why that's needed. Now you might have noticed, if you've tried to run Orca before continuing the video, that it doesn't have a user interface like most software. That is, it runs entirely behind the scenes. So we have to set it up manually. Now, in order to run an Orca calculation, we're gonna need two things. The coordinates of the molecule and an Orca input file. Now the coordinates of the molecule are very easy to set up. If we open up IQMOL, we can use that bit of software. First off, we'll build a molecule of water, so make sure we're in build mode and put down an oxygen atom. And then we're going to click the add hydrogens button and then finally the minimize energy button just to make sure the water is in the right orientation. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is one extra step, which is if we go into build and we click symmetrize molecule, it will pop the, mo the molecule of water in the middle like that. Now I'll explain that process in a minute. We go to file, we save as, we navigate to the directory in which we're going to do our calculation and we'll call it water. And you'll notice it's being saved as a .xyz file. So we'll just click save here and then we're done with IQMOL for now. So if we have a look now at our new XYZ file, if we open this with Notepad, which we can access like so, you'll see that first we have the number of atoms there are, and then we have each atom listed with an element label, and then the coordinates of that atom. In IQMOL, when we clicked Symmetrize Molecule, all that did was make all these numbers as low as possible without changing the geometry of the molecule. And that makes our calculation much, much easier. So we can close this. This is prepared as we need it. The next thing we need to do is make an input file. Now, the way that we're going to do this is by manually typing it out in Notepad. Feel free to use any other text editor like Notepad++, but Notepad is nice and simple and comes by default on Windows, so that's what I'm using. 
Now, we set up the input file with a few parameters which Orca will then be able to read and convert into actual calculations. So the first line will start with an exclamation mark, which says, look at me, essentially. And then we're going to use PBE0. Now, PBE0 is a basis set. Now, a basis set is a set of assumptions that are made about a series of atoms. Feel free to do as much reading about this as you want. You do not need to un understand it fully for the purposes of this video. The next line, we're going to include what you need to do, Orca. So we'll again put an exclamation mark to show it's a new line. We'll hit space. What we wanted to do is optimize the structure, which is why we put in opt. We leave a space. And then we're going to type anfreq, which is short for analytical frequencies. That means it's going to optimize the structure and also show us the vibrations that the molecule will naturally have. In the last line, we're going to tell Orca where to find the coordinates of the molecule. We press a star, we type XYZ file. Zero indicates that there is zero charge on the molecule. This one means that the molecule does not have any unpaired electrons within it. Don't worry too much about what that precisely means. The final thing we type is the name of the XYZ file, which is water.xyz. And there we go. This is the input file. This is all we need to do. Now, all we have to do is save it. Go to Save As. Navigate to the directory in which you're going to save it and then save it as whatever you like. I'm going to call this water.imp. Now be sure on Notepad, this save as type, make sure you change that to all files or it will default to turning it into a text file for you, which is not what we want. Just hit save and we can close this. And now we're ready to run some Orca calculations. We have our input file and we have our coordinates. In order to set off our Orca calculation, we're going to need to use command prompt. Now, in order to open that in Windows 10, click start, type CMD, and then command prompt will come up in the search result. Click that, and you'll have command prompt open. By default, command prompt starts you in your user directory. Now, that's not where we need to be. We need to be in our Orca calculations directory. Now, a little trick for Windows 10 is if you click in this address bar, it will immediately convert that series of buttons into an address. If you just right click and copy that, if we go back to command prompt and we type CD, which means change drive, and then we just control and V paste in that address, you will see that now it reads that we are in the water directory, which is exactly where we need to be. Now, all we have to do is trigger off the Orca calculation. So we type Orca so that Windows knows that it wants us to use Orca. And then we will put water.imp, which is our input file name. Then we're going to put the greater than sign and then we're going to type water.out. Now what this means is use orca to convert orca.imp into water.out. Now, if you just hit enter here, the calculation will begin. And you'll see that in this directory, a lot of temporary files are going to pop up. Now I'm going to do this with you in real time, just so you get an impression as to how long it takes. This is a water molecule. This is very simple. If in later videos, we're going to look at more advanced molecules and they will take upwards of a few minutes to maybe even hours for these calculations to run on your home computer. But as you see, water was done in less than 30 seconds. Now, we want to have a look and see what Orc has generated. And the main thing that we're interested in is this water.out file. When we open the water.out file in Notepad, the first things we see are the names of the people who worked really hard on it. If your name is in this list, thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
Obviously it makes this video possible, but it also makes the work I'm doing in my professional life possible. And I cannot thank you enough for making Orca free for others to use. For the purposes of this video, all we really need from this .out file is the vibrational frequencies, which are at the bottom, but there's lots of other stuff in here. A good example is these SCF iterations. This is essentially the output that happens as Orca moves the atoms around and finds the lowest potential energy of the molecule. There's lots of other stuff in this .out file. I recommend you become familiar with as much of it as you can, but for the purposes of this intro, we're just going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to look at these vibrational frequencies. Now remember I said that molecules will vibrate at different frequencies based on their structure. Now this is what's been calculated from first principles. If we scroll down a little, we'll see that there's also an infrared spectrum that's been, trans uh, that's been generated, which shows you how well these vibrations will absorb the light. But this can't be plotted into a spectrum in its current form. We need to do one last command on command prompt. And that command is this. Orca underscore map SBC. We then put a space and we give the name of our output file. We put a space and we're going to type IR because we want an infrared spectrum. And then we put minus X zero and then 400. And that is the bottom x limit as in the lowest energy that we want to plot and then we put minus x1 which is the upper x limit and we put 4500 hit enter and you'll see that it has made us a brand new dot dat file here if we open this up we'll see that this is a series of numbers just a column this is where we're going to need to use a different bit of software to plot this as a graph or spectrum. So I'm just going to select all of this, hit copy, and then we're going to open up LibreOffice, and specifically we want LibreOffice Calc. Now we're just going to paste that data into LibreOffice. By default this text import uh, dialog comes up in LibreOffice. Make sure you have separator options as separated by space and tab and merge delimiters is checked. Hit OK and you'll see that we have the data placed in here. Select all of the data by holding down Control and Shift and using the arrows to go to the bottom of the data and then hit Insert, Chart and then what you want to plot is a XY scatter plot with lines only. If you just hit finish here, you'll see that we have plotted what looks very much like an infrared spectrum. There's a few little tweaks we need to do. First, we don't need this legend, so we can click it and then hit delete. Second, this axis should by convention be reversed. In infrared spectroscopy, the left of the x-axis is the higher frequency. So we'll click reverse direction here. And then finally, we'll go to insert titles. We'll give this a nice title, Infrared Spectrum of Water. We will title the x-axis as Wave Number, and we will title the y-axis as Transmittance. If we hit OK, we'll see that we now have a beautiful infrared spectrum of water, which we can copy into any reports or presentations and used to demonstrate that we can calculate infrared spectrum of molecules. Just to finish off, here's the experimental spectrum of water side by side with the calculated spectrum. You can see some obvious differences in the shape, but in general, the same features are present, marked by the colored arrows. Now, bearing in mind that we're only looking at a single water molecule in our simulation, whereas all experimental data will be carried out on several billion billion molecules, it's not surprising that the experimental spectrum shows a few extra signals, likely coming from clusters of molecules. Now the same procedure that I've described in this video can be used to generate infrared spectra of almost any molecules, be they simple molecules like ammonia or carbon dioxide, or more complex organic molecules like bromobenzene or caffeine. 
have a go yourself, but bear in mind that the more electrons a molecule has, the longer it will take to run the simulation. Remember to put each calculation in a new folder to make sure that we don't get ourselves mixed up with the multiple files that Orca generates, or that we accidentally interfere with the calculations as they're running. Let me know in the comments which molecules you simulate, and I'll see you next time when we'll look at how to visualize molecular vibrations.